Good evening, everyone. The hour of 6 p.m. having arrived, I will call to order this regular meeting of the Planning, Licenses, and Development Committee. This meeting is being broadcast live on the City of Keene YouTube channel. The video is also posted on the City website by the end of the next business day, barring any technical difficulties. Copies of the printed agenda are available in the wall pockets just as you enter the meeting room. The public and other city councillors will be recognized to ask questions and make comments on agenda items under discussion. After being recognized, all remarks are to be made through the chair. I will not recognize an individual to speak a second time until everyone who wishes to has had a chance to speak. Anyone who wishes to address the committee is asked to go to one of the microphones in the room and identify themselves by their name and address prior to speaking. Written comments from the public will be accepted at the City Clerk's Office until Tuesday at 1 p.m. I will now call to order this regular meeting of the Planning, Licenses, and Development Committee and declare a quorum present. So welcome, everyone. Um, we have a short agenda this evening, just a couple of items that we're going to move through. The first item is the Keene Kiwanis Club's request to use city property for the tree lighting ceremony. Um, I have here Peg uh, Bruce as the secretary for the Keene Kiwanis Club. Is Peg with us? Okay, great. Do we have someone from staff that wants to speak to us about where this is currently with the city? Oh, city manager. So we have not yet had time to schedule the protocol meetings, and so we are requesting that this be on, put on more time until that happens. Okay, great. Um, do we have any questions from the committee or the public about that? Seeing none, I would entertain a motion. Move to recommend the request for the use of city property for the tree lighting ceremony be placed on more time to allow the protocol meetings with the city staff to occur. Second. I have a motion by Councillor Giacomo, a second by Councillor Ormerod. Does anyone have any questions about that motion? Seeing none, I would ask for a vote. All in favor? And that is unanimous. Our second item tonight is relating to the amendments to the Land Development Codes, Rural District and Conservation Residential Development Subdivision Regulations, Ordinance 0-2022-09-A. Um, and I think we are going to, I just want to reiterate that the public hearing has been held on this item. Um, we are going to talk about that a little bit tonight, but we will not be hearing any additional public comment. Um, I'd like to speak to the city attorney to address any opening remarks about this. Yes, thank you. Thank you. I will never get used to this, I'm sorry. Um, thank you, uh, Madam Chair and the members of the committee. Yeah, I, I did want to uh, talk to the committee uh, about this a little bit this evening. Um, subsequent to the public hearing that was held last Thursday, uh, we determined that the public hearing notice that was used to notify the public of the public hearing was defective uh, under the statute. <clears throat> and in, in fact, it was a comment that was made uh, during the public hearing that caused me to go and take a look at it afterwards uh, to make a determination. Um, what the notice did not include and in which the statute requires is a uh, specific statement uh, designating, and this is quoting from the statute itself, designating the place where the proposal is on file for public inspection uh, and, and is stated in the notice. Now, it's, there was a link uh, on the public notice that was provided to uh, the uh, website uh, that had the ordinance located on it. However, that's not sufficient uh, under the statute. It's good to include that, mm -hmm. uh, but the reality is, as we discovered during the COVID process, you know, not everybody has the same technology, not, not everybody has the same access to uh, technology. So the legislature, even though it recognizes in this notice provision, uh, for anybody that's curious, it's RSA 675 colon 7, specifically uh, Roman 2. <clears throat> but um, this, the legislature recognizes that public notice can be achieved uh, other than in uh, a publication. Uh, that used to always be the standard that it had to be in a publication, but the legislature has has recognized that we live in a digital environment, and you can provide it to posting and digitally. Uh, but the legislature did not see fit to change uh, that language. Uh, place implies and requires a physical location, 
uh, and uh, the, the statement that it be on file also uh, supports that uh, position. So unfortunately, as, as I said, the public notice uh, wasn't, uh, was, was defective. <clears throat> the case law is, is there is case law uh, on this issue. It actually came up uh, uh, a few times, but the seminal case on it was decided in 1988. Uh, the court looked at this provision, although the statute has been amended a little bit since then. They renumbered some of the paragraphs. The language that the court was examining in 1988 is essentially the same language that exists today. Uh, the court was not dealing specifically with the question of the designating of the place where it could be uh, found, but the court was dealing with the sufficiency of the notice for other reasons. Uh, the court said basically that the statute uh, needs, uh, the statutory needs need to be uh, complied with. Um, and what the court did in that case was be, uh, hold the uh, subsequent rezoning to be invalid uh, and void. So we definitely would like to avoid that kind of situation uh, if possible. So my suggestion to the uh, committee at this point, <clears throat> there are two, at least two solutions uh, for this problem. Uh, one of the solutions uh, is to uh, re-notice uh, the public hearing and hold the public hearing again. Uh, the second solution, and I think the one that the staff is recommending, I'm certainly recommending, uh, is that the, 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 the committee recommend to the city council that it be returned to the joint committee for further uh, discussion. That would allow the public, there were a lot of public comments, as you know, last Thursday. Mm -hmm. uh, that would allow uh, additional public uh, uh, participation in the process. Uh, even though reminding everybody the joint workshop is just that, workshops. Um, but the public can go to those uh, joint committee workshops and express their opinion. Uh, and then there will need to be a subsequent uh, public hearing uh, after the joint committee reaches whatever decision it's going to reach. Uh, and that may include, you know, uh, dividing up the question under the ordinance or whatever else the joint committee may want to do. So at this point, it's not an option for the city council uh, to uh, proceed with the ordinance as presented and vote on it. That is not an option. Uh, the only two options are the ones that I have laid out, and those are certainly up to the committee uh, to decide what, the, what they wish to do. Great. Well, thank you for all of that background. Um, I know we had discussed this earlier today, and I have given this um, a lot of thought. Personally, I'd just like to open the conversation here at the committee by saying that, you know, I was not able to attend the council meeting um, due to health reasons, but I did watch it live on our YouTube channel um, from the comfort of my couch, and it was uh, great to see all of the public participating. Um, we weren't in a forum where we were allowed to have dialogue back and forth or where we were, we were in a situation where a lot of these questions could get answered. They were left very open-ended. And um, if we go to a public uh, hearing process at, in front of city council again, it's going to be a very similar forum. Um, and if the council wants to change anything, it has to go back to joint anyway. So I don't think we should go through the exercise. I don't know if the committee will agree, but I would like to personally see it go back to the joint committee, open up the public workshop phase. Um, we could talk about some, if we want to, um, some recommendations we'd like to see from the joint committee tonight. But otherwise, we can hash out some of these details at the joint committee with the public um, input and then hopefully come to a resolution on something that everyone will like to agree on. Uh, Councilor Jones? Thank you. Um, I tend to agree with you about sending it back. I think, it, I think it's actually better to send it back. I mean, I'm looking at my notes. Fifteen spe people spoke at the last public hearing, um, and they all had quality stuff that they brought up. And uh, I think have, we can discuss this better in a less formal place, mm -hmm. being the joint committee meeting, and the, the public can still speak to that. And we can break it down into sections that way, too, and talk about the various issues that people have. Um, and I, that would be the place. So I'm just agreeing with you. Great. Thank you. Do we have any other comments from the committee? So seeing none, I would ask for a motion. Uh, we'll move to refer ordinance 0-2022-09-A back to the Joint Planning Board PLD Committee for discussion regarding separating the issues of the ordinance or further discussion. Second. A motion by Councillor Giacomo, second by Councillor Jones. Any questions on that motion from the committee? Seeing none, I would ask for a vote. All in favor? And that is unanimous. 
I'm assuming that a lot of the folks that I see here tonight came to hear uh, the deliberation and the discussion about this issue tonight. And I know that this probably wasn't um, an answer to all of your questions, but we will, um, this will go before the full council next Thursday. And if the council agrees, uh, this item will go back in front of the joint committee. So my advice to you is to follow along the process. Um, the joint committee meets once a month, uh, the first Monday of the month, and this, uh, the, sorry, the second Monday of the month, and this item will probably be coming up um, the October meeting. So that would be my advice is to uh, plan to attend that and there'll be an open forum for public dialogue um, and we'll have city staff and presentations and information will get um, organized a little bit better there for you. Can I ask? Uh, Councilor Jones. Can I uh, ask a procedural question? Um, when you said it goes back to the full council, our recommendation is going to the full council. Correct. But at the council, they could change it. They could. Yes, that, that is true. They could move the, uh, to approve the ordinance they I would be advising the council pretty strongly that that would not be a good option I mean I'm hoping and they would agree with the committee and send it back but I'm just saying that could happen in light of the public hearing um, notice defectedness we would have the city attorney's legal advice to lean on hopefully That's and true. Um, hopefully that would be sufficient enough and I think that the five of us are in agreement that it should go back so that's a good start thank um, you thank you Councilor Jones so uh, Councilor Johnson yes thank you I'm, I'm, I'm very happy that we're doing this I apologize I know I bounced out with so where have you all been and I was just reacting to our two years of working on this and recognizing not all the time the word gets out so I apologize if I offended anyone, and uh, I'm glad it's going back Monday night. I look forward to seeing people come out and speak. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Johnson. All right, so we're going to move on to our last item, which is Councillor Greenwald's amendment to the City Council Rules of Order for Remote Access. Councillor Greenwald, could you come up to the uh, table, please? Good evening, Mitch Greenwald, uh, Ward 2, uh, City Councilor. Councilor Greenwald, would you move your microphone a little bit closer? Is, is, it, on? is it on? No. Oh, no. No. sorry. Uh, One, there you go. There you. You can't see the Thank you. I have a special microphone because I'm colorblind. <laughs> <laughs> can't tell. Okay, thank yeah. you. Uh, <clears throat> my, uh, my communication was regarding Zoom and what I, what I ran into, I'll just uh, elaborate my situation that prompted the letter uh, that I sent in. Uh, I was on vacation. We were voting the budget, and I requested uh, to attend the meeting by Zoom. Several emails sent to the mayor, who I thought was the appropriate recipient for that. And I wasn't denied, I was just, uh, I guess, uh, by lack of response, denied and I was unable to uh, vote on the budget. Uh, I was unable to represent the voters of Ward 2 who uh, would have interest in this. Upon returning, uh, it became very clear that uh, it's a lot of confusion, certainly in my mind, and I'm certain that there are other counselors too. Is the notice to be given to the presiding officer, uh, be it the committee chair or the mayor or the city clerk? Well, the more correct answer seems to be the city clerk, who then will move it on to the, uh, the appropriate chair. I don't know where it's written. I don't think it is written. So overall, what I'm proposing is that the rules need clarification. It's got to be uniform at, in order to be fair. Uh, at our last council meeting, uh, Council Workman uh, requested uh, to attend by Zoom. She was attending a, a family wedding. That's great. She wants to represent her, her constituents. Uh, and the, uh, the chair, the mayor, said, without objection, we'll let her uh, participate by Zoom. I think that's the way to do it. It's not one of the, uh, the two uh, noted uh, reasons for Zooming, which are health and work-related. I suppose in my case, I could have said, well, I was in Puerto Rico looking for real estate. 
but I prefer not to be quite that disingenuous. <laughs> so you know, I, I just don't think it's uh, that narrow. There is a, another uh, category or other good reason, or the chair could help me with that phrase that's in there, but still that's a little wishy-washy what that might be. So in terms of what I'm requesting that you give some thought to, um, who, who do you make the request to? I'm going to assume it's got to be in writing, but you know, I don't know. And what's the deadline? And then it gets into, well, what are the reasons that would be acceptable? And might some of those reasons uh, you know, delve into privacy? That concerns me. I know we at least have to follow the state law because that lays, lays out the parameters for zooming. The body must vote which uh, clarified to me that it's not at the direction of the uh, chair or the mayor. But how, and I, I just don't see the mechanism of how that gets done. So if I wanna make a request uh, to Zoom and the body, the council is gonna vote on it and someone in the group has a question, well, I as the requester can't speak unless I'm allowed to Zoom. It's, it, it's just a physical, uh, uh, conflict. If uh, there is a discussion, can the requester participate in it? I'm also very concerned, and I sincerely hope this never happens, that about the permission that it not be used as a political tool, and it can be. If the body is voting and it's a close vote on an issue coming up, and the requester ha has a definite stance on it, that could be used as a political tool uh, to uh, perhaps swing the vote. Very difficult, and I'm throwing this all out to all of us to, to think more about it now that we've had several months to actually work with it, and there's been a couple of situations of denials, a couple of situations of approvals. Uh, originally, I was thinking about, well, we need to limit the amount of zooming, listening to Council Filio's uh, logic that it could lead to snowbird uh, counselors. I don't think that's too likely, but I think if it was developing, then the body can deny. So that's easy. But that, that was part of my logic why in my letter I was saying, well, maybe uh, let's authorize two, let's call it wild card <laughs> requests uh, that couldn't be denied uh, by the presiding officer. But by the state regulations, it has to be approved or denied by the body. So. The whole two just kind of fell apart for me. Had a uh, conversation today with uh, Chris Coates, who's the county administrator. I said, how, how do you guys deal with this? He said, somebody wants to Zoom, they Zoom. It's more important to have the input of, of his uh, commissioners. There's no big requesting. You state the reason, you state the location, all the protocols that the city attorney has told us about. So overall, uh, what I would suggest, and I'm throwing it out to the body to uh, think about it and probably refer it to staff to, to try to uh, make it simple uh, so we all have consistency, that the notice be delivered to the city clerk with whatever time uh, is appropriate, because it does take time to get it set up and, and prepared. Any stated reason, because uh, state requires a stated reason, voted approval by the body, and if necessary, the requester can be allowed to speak during the deliberation uh, of the body. I think that's, that's it. So I, I, I welcome your wisdom and I thank you for uh, listening to this and also for uh, uh, putting some flexibility in the rules to allow the, this discussion a second time uh, in this calendar year. Well, and I appreciate you bringing it forward. I think that this is a new item that we just added to our rules of order. And anytime you um, work toward adding something new, there's potential for it needing to be a little massaged or to figure out how it would be used practically. And I think we're finding some of the holes in the, um, in the bucket here about how this tool that we've added is going to be managed effectively. Um, I can say from my personal experience as a chair, we have had situations where um, the council has approved a member of our council to have an extended 
period of Zooming available to them due to medical reasons. And we then, as a chair, I had um, the privilege of having this person attend Zoom meetings at our joint committee. So um, was I authorized immediately to allow them to participate or is there a process that needs to happen that has the joint committee um, authorization or you know are they going to get to vote on that as well I think that there are some fine-tuning that can happen um, and some clarifications and I think that it would be great to have some guidance from staff for the chairs on how to approach some of this as well um, I am reading through the section four of the rules of order now it does state in here that a member wishing to participate remotely must notify the city clerk at least 24 hours prior to the meeting or remote participation shall not be permitted so I, that does establish a time frame for us I think that is workable um, I think a lot of folks were notifying the chairs and that has, seems to be the least effective way for this to um, to you know, work and move forward. So, I don't know, does staff have any comments? Yeah, I, I do. Um, and, and all of this is, is, is fine, and you know, we'll continue to work on it. I, I do want to point out, though, that that language in the in the uh, in section four now, with respect to notification to the city clerk, was really intended just for the technology right. piece uh, to make sure that we could have that in place uh, in time and. Uh, you know, I, I don't want to speak for the city clerk. Uh, she can speak for herself, but I suspect uh, that the city clerk does not want to be in the position of making a determination uh, as to whether somebody meets the requirements, whatever those are, uh, when we put those together. Uh, keeping in mind that um, if we are, if we amend the rule, and we amend the rule to include the one or more specific reasons as we have done now. Uh, for permitting an individual to participate remotely, um, that when it comes before the council, uh, the council is still going to need to act. Uh, what that means is that it can either be by consensus, which would be the preferable way to do it, because if it's in the rule uh, at that point, you have already established that the reason stated by the individual is permissible, uh, and it should be it should happen by consensus at that point. Uh, if for some reason somebody wanted to uh, request a remote participation outside of what has been designated, uh, that would require a suspension of the rules and a two-thirds vote uh, to participate. So just wanted to make that clear. Well, I think where that gets muddy is that the items that the council has approved are two very specific items and then one very right. unspecific exactly. item. Exactly. So, I don't know that a suspension of the rules would ever be. It, it, that assumes that we take out that. I see. Phrase. Okay. So I do not want to take out reasonably practical. Um, I think that that has given the. I think that that gives the council the ability to make decisions about summer weddings or trips to Puerto Rico or death in the family or. You know, some of these, we, when we sat there during those conversations at full council, we had lots of conversations and we could have gone way down into the rabbit hole of all of the different things that we would or would not add. And every one of those, you know, a different makeup of those 15 counselors would have liked or not liked. And so I think that it's very difficult to list or um, every single item that the council would potentially agree to. I think if the person feels that their participation is important in that meeting and they are willing to present that reason to the council, then the council should have the ability to say yes or no. Um, I don't think that the chair or the clerk should have authority to not allow them to present their case to the council according to our own rule. So the problem here is not necessarily with the verbiage inside our rule, it's with the process and how counselors have been using it and how um, the, those of us that are sort of on the fringes of imposing it are, understand it because we don't necessarily know what the right thing to do or say or, um, or how to, you know, if, so if Mitch requests to Zoom and the clerk's in a, an appropriate time frame and the clerk sets up 
um, the technology. Does he get to come on to the Zoom and state his name and reason for requesting to Zoom? And the mayor then would say, or the chair would say, do you, you know, I'm approving this request because it meets one of our reasons, or would the council then have to vote? Most of what you just said is right. Okay. Um, they would still so need go? to come in through the technology, appear before the council. Uh, the uh, the chair would go through the questions uh, that are required under the statute, uh, and the it, it, it would be the chair basically saying unless there is any objection, uh, you know, we, we'll allow the remote participation because it's not the chair ultimately that makes the decision; it's the public body that's supposed to make the decision. So, is the chair voicing the request of the councillor yes. to the body, yes. not the councillor yes. stating their own request? Yes. So, how does the councillor's request get to the chair via the clerk? Uh, we, that's a process that we will have to talk about okay. uh, at this point. About, I see. and that will take some internal discussion and otherwise about just how that initially gets communicated uh, okay. into the into the council. That's a process that has not been hammered out yet. Gotcha. And I think that's maybe where we're losing people, right? Is that sort of that's the bottleneck. Do we have any comment, uh, Councillor Giacomo? Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, first off, I, th I think what, what Mitch is proposing here is perfectly reasonable. I think what we've, this this is also coming from someone who wanted to loosen up these regulations as much as possible to allow as much remote participation. And Mitch's statement about wanting to represent constituents, I believe I stood up and said that in council, fighting for a wider interpretation of this. So full support of what was being proposed here. Um, I like the kind of, and, and I don't believe the council, <laughs> I don't believe the full council saw that saw that to be the case at the time. I think a compromise with two two zooms allowable outside of medical reasons or the other um, the way that Mitch phrased it was much better here. <clears throat> Not apply to serious medical issues, disability, or out of town work responsibilities. I think that's a perfect way of phrasing it, and I think we should uh, give city staff an opportunity to, uh, to 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 create a framework that we can work with some language in the in the code. Thank you very much. Uh, and thank you so much, Councillor Greenwald, for bringing this to the floor again. Uh, I know that I would like to have had Zoom last year when we had a horrific snowstorm. And I couldn't drive. I mean, I couldn't get out of my yard. But I wanted to be here. I don't like to miss. And fortunately, my chair was willing to come and get me with her SUV. But I think that it ought to be open to that. Certainly, we're not going to take advantage of it, you know. But if there's a snowstorm and you can't see, <laughs> that's that's where I would like to see. And this is 21st century. I don't care what we're, or whatever it is, 22nd century, whatever it is. <laughs> we have to. <laughs> we have these wonderful tools, and I don't see us abusing them. Thank you, Councilor Jones. Can I ask the attorney a question, please? Yes. Yeah. Um, just following up on what you said about the mayor asking, is, is there any objection? Would that also happen at the committee level? Would the committee chair say, is there any objection? Yes, it would be the same process at the committee level. I can see that becoming very political. You well, know? <laughs> I'm struggling uh, <laughs> because uh, lately, I have seemed to discover that everything seems to be political, so it's it's really hard to avoid that. Um, y y you can't make anything 100% foolproof. You have to depend upon people acting reasonably, reasonable people acting reasonably. Uh, that's all we can do. And I, I would like to think that it would be really hard to, you know, convince eight counselors to do the wrong thing, so that's why there's so many of us. And um, I was thinking three at the committee level. Oh, uh, true. <laughs> My, I, I still would like to think that I'm sitting here with people who are going to do the right thing. I'm not thinking of the present council. I'm thinking of future councils. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know, you never know who's going to be up here. Um, but if we do open it, so at any time, a, if, the, if the presiding chair d allow, so if the presiding chair allows or not allows participation based on their interpretation of the request and whether it meets the rule 
anyone on the committee can object to that. That would be true. So I think that there were situations where the presiding officer did not allow Zoom, but the council was not notified or allowed to object, and that is where some of these situations have arisen, correct? Yes. So um, if the officer has, an, has a reason to deny someone, the whole process still needs to happen. The technology still needs to be set up, the counselor still needs to be brought in, the presiding officer can say, there's been a request, I've decided that it does not meet the rule, if there's no objection, we're going to let Councillor Greenwell go back to his vacation or wherever he is. <laughs> and then there's an opportunity then for the council to object. Yes. And that piece was missing prior. So I think that we need to give some thought to the language when we're crafting these policies that the presiding officer, regardless of opinion of whether the request meets the criteria for Zoom participation, must allow the person to attend the meeting initially via Zoom and the council or the committee an opportunity to object to their decision. Yes. Councilor Jocelyn. I, I think, I, I mean, I believe me, I'm completely uh, in agreement that there, there is the possibility in the future to use this for political means or um, I think where the, it's the city clerk question on here. If, if, if there is, if there are going to be, if it's a city clerk issue, does that not mean it becomes a, basically a, a, an item in the preface to the meeting? If the city clerk is being notified, that would imply that it's going to be added to the agenda, to the, or the pre-agenda items to vote on the remote participation. Is that correct? Well, again, we haven't we haven't internally discussed. Okay, the so that's process. all going to. However, um, th that that's a, at least a possibility okay. uh, to do that. Whether we want to, whether the city clerk wants to, uh, you know, just to put that into the agenda packet. I don't know. It, yeah, go ahead. Well, I I see the problem with that is the timing. Yeah. Well, agenda packets go out before right. 24 hours before the meeting. Oh, that's right. I think it really goes to process and establishing the process and tightening up that when a counselor requests, we need if they meet the 24 hours, as as um, you were saying, set up the technology and then let the council vote whether they are denied or or approved if right. the council wants to interject at that point, whether that's at the committee level or at the full council. And that was a piece that was missing before. And so hammering that out um, makes a lot of sense. One of the questions I have in, in your discussion, you're talking about you know whether or not to actually change the reasons um, and whether or not to adjust the language. I think the or otherwise permitted and reasonable discretion of the public body is probably the the squishy language that got us into this sort of a predicament and um, and whether or not you want to change that to limit that to the sort of the two um, you know the and add that to two additional options you know for any reason um, or leave it that way and just uh, rely on the process um, and the counselors to uh, you know, keep everyone uh, coming to the meetings. Because one of the concerns that we have, and we've expressed it before, is we have to physically have a quorum. And there are times that people can't come and they're not looking to zoom in, but we ha could have a mix. I mean, the other night we had quite a few counselors missing at the meeting. And if we added a couple more that wanted to zoom, we wouldn't meet a quorum and we'd all be going home. And so I know that the concern is striking a balance that provides the option, but still ensures that people are, you know, trying to come when they when they can attend in person. I, I think I think where where my where my disagreement with with that comes in is that I, I believe that the remote that remote participation is not an alternative to showing up to a meeting. It's an alternative to not showing up to a meeting. That's the way that I believe that this is intended and I think it's the way that people are using it and so I think all this is all I 
picture what Mitch's proposal here is doing is it's codifying the number of times that it's it used for non-work or medical reasons. Just mm -hmm. it, it's giving people that normally would just no show to a couple meetings an opportunity to participate still. That's, that's the way that I see it at least, and maybe that's not the way that the rest of council will see it. And it certainly I don't think it was the way that council saw it when we voted on kind of the expanded language originally and we, we trimmed it down to where it lives today. But I think if we clear up the language regarding who should be notified for sure, because um, I think I, I see that as really because the mayor, again, didn't turn down formally the request. It was a, it was a, it was a calling into the void. It was a, there, 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 there was a denial by omission, basically. And, and, I, and I, I think that is, that's problematic. If the clerk is copied on it, then we don't run into that. So I think we need to make sure we clarify the language as to please include the chair and the clerk or whoever, whoever we decide needs to be communicated to. But I think that's really the most important language. But if we do add in something about the two, if we follow really the full intent of what Mitch is asking for, which is the two. Right. So um, just one second, Councillor. I, I just want to interject because I still have a little bit of PTSD from the process that we went through to amend these rules of order in the winter, spring, or both. <laughs> yes, both, exactly. Um, and, you know, that was a really tough conversation to get to this rule that we came up with here. And I don't want, I, you know, I feel like if we open this can, do, how do you get the, the worms back in there? And um, I'm just concerned with tr trying to give the full council another go at how, whether, I, I guess it, we can't lose because if they refused to adopt our amendments, which would take away all of our policy, we would um, revert back to this rule. But if we, we would lose our potential policy amendments, if we start changing the um, reasons that we've already established and the council has very difficultly come to some agreement on, that is my one concern. Councilor Omarad. Thank you, Madam Chair. I don't think we need to specify one, two, three, how many times and for what reasons. I think the most important thing is if we specify the process where the chair is the facilitator and he must allow the reason to be heard and bring it to a vote or find consensus. If we clarify that part, I don't think we have to debate with the council on what are all the reasons and the limits on each of those reasons. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for the discussion. You, you're going right where I was hoping, just free thinking the, the whole situation, because you're right, it took a lot of time. But now that we've been in the trenches with this, I don't think it'll be that horrible. But just to throw one other um, thought to uh, the, uh, whoever's going to uh, write this thing up, uh, when, when I picked two is a number, I did that just based on uh, well, the standard, if we miss two council meetings, we still get paid. So somebody in their wisdom must have come up with two is some number. <clears throat> uh, two, three, whatever. But also, uh, what about committee meetings? So again, for the group to discuss, if you do go the route of counting, two council and two, two committee, two council, one committee, now just give it some thought how it goes. Or, kind of that Councilor Omar is saying, don't try to nail it down that hard because every time the request comes in, the body is going to vote. Right. And I think the first time some wise guy gets shot down, we don't have this situation. And as Council Jones is saying, it's not this council we're thinking for the future councils. We could always tighten the rules. And my experience is if someone is abusing a situation, it has a way of working itself out uh, and correcting. Mm -hmm. And the voters surely will, uh, will correct it pretty soon. If some counselor is uh, missing too many meetings, I think there is a procedure to recall a counselor also. Somewhere in the rules, I'm sure. But uh, let's not over-engineer it too far. 
Okay. Well, I also realize that, and then not hesitantly speak for Council Filio, who thinks that eliminate all zoning. Mm. So there are the, the two, extremes. Yes, the two ideas about this. Um, yeah. Well, I think we've given the staff a lot to think about. Does anyone else have anything they want to add from okay. the committee? Uh, Councillor Johnson? Well, I do know when you brought this up before, we had about three of our councillors were very didactic in their comments. And it was... Uh, was Councillor Johnson, can you just turn on your oh, microphone? Thank I you. Thank you. Sorry. Pardon. We had about three councillors who were very didactic, and sometimes comments get made that, that you know, we're pretty nice people around here, but sometimes comments get made, somebody gets their feet stepped on. If Councillor Greenwald is going to do something with his family, and he tells you well in advance, I mean, that should be allowed to all of us. Um, it's just, we're, we're giving our time in matter. We're giving our time here. We care. We really care about this process. I don't think we have to worry about the future. The future can take care of itself. We presently have something at our fingertips. Now, I am on another committee, and they, it's a city committee, and they use Zoom all the time. There's not even a question. And I don't know why, but it works. What I want to know is, if we use Zoom, can we vote? Mm, yes, you can. So anyhow, I'm totally with you. Great. And I, I think, I, I'm sorry, I just finished it. I think that in all due respect, you kind of got beat up because you wanted to have this one reason. Well, we don't need that. We can rise above that. Thank you, Councillor. One, one other thought just popped to mind is yes. when you said other committees, uh, would this apply to planning board and other committees, or is this no. just council? This is a council rule. The uh, planning board would have to adopt their own if yes. they wanted to go there? Okay. And joint committee, where it has a, the PLD committee meeting, do they have to follow this rule? That's actually an interesting question, uh, keeping in mind that the joint committee is a creature of our ordinance. Uh, it doesn't appear anywhere in state law. We, we created that, which is permissible. We can create that. But my initial reaction to that question was, uh, you are there as two boards. You are there as the planning board, and you are there as the planning licenses and development uh, committee. Uh, and you have different sets of rules. So it seems to me uh, that the PLD would need to make that decision for its own member, rather than the uh, joint board uh, gotcha. together. Okay, great, thank you for that clarification. So if we don't have any more comments, I wanna open this up to the public. Is there anyone from the public who'd like to speak on this? Councillor Remy? Thank you, uh, Councillor Remy at large. Uh, as one of the folks that first brought this forward, I'm obviously very supportive of the idea of opening this up to more folks. I think this is a, a great way to encourage participation and get representation from folks that may not have, may not otherwise be able to attend. I'm. I guess fundamentally okay with some amount of limit on it, but I think to Councillor Greenwald's point, it'll self-manage. I don't think we need reasons necessarily. I think if reasonably uh, able, if you're you know sitting downstairs on the bench or you're at your house and you just didn't want to leave the couch, you were reasonably able to come to the meeting and I think you should have come to the meeting. But basically anything other than that, if you're out of town, if you're traveling for work, which is already allowed, but traveling for family reasons, I don't think we should be the judge and jury of whether that was okay or not. So I, I would be supportive of removing all the reasons and basically just saying, if not reasonably possible. Um, yeah. So. Okay. Thank you for your comments. Anyone else from the public? Okay, seeing none. Um, Madam Chair, if you don't mind, yes. just I would like to recap on um, being the, the whoever was going to write this. Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> Just to, uh, to to make sure, Councillor Greenwald has made a specific request. Yes. Um, so I'm going to incorporate his request, uh, and the council can further discuss whether it wants to do what he is asking you to do. Uh, the, the the underlying issue, from my perspective, really, and, and Councillor Amarad really hit the nail on the head. Um, and this was an assumption, unfortunately that I think was made and, and that I made uh, in this process. 
because I understand and know and, and believe that everybody else did too, that it is the action of the body that's required uh, and not an individual uh, committee chairman uh, or frankly the mayor. So that sort of got lost. Um, and so when I rewrite this uh, and present it, I'm going to spell that out uh, in more detail uh, based upon what the committee has and what has been requested. But I did want you to know that I know that it is it is difficult to open up these permissible reasons issues, but at this point, that's what Councillor uh, Greenwald has requested, uh, and I'll put it in there, and you as a council can decide whether you want it or not at this point. Well, doesn't the committee have authority to give the staff direction on what we would like to see drafted and brought back before you, you can, if you want. I didn't hear that, but that's right. You can. I, I mean, I think that... Um, I have not heard anyone from the committee necessarily say that they would like to remove the two reasons that were um, primarily going to always be allowed, which were medical and um, work-related travel. Um, do we want to, so the question then from the committee would be, do you want to leave in reasonably practical, um, let's see, reasonable discretion of the public body, or would you like to edit that out and add in a certain quantity of um, pre-authorized Zoom uses. Councillor Jones? I had my hand up because I have no idea what I want. <laughs> that was definitely that was a tough a question. Choose, choose uh, me. <laughs> I, I really don't know the answer to that. Do you want you want to put a number you're asking do you want to put a number in there or not put a number correct? do you want to leave it so that it says the reasonable discretion of the public body and the public body votes or do you want to say in the rule that a counselor has the authority to zoom a certain number of times for whatever reason they choose I don't know Mitch is asking for a number I was trying to make a compromise if I was uh, to, to state what I would prefer, I like what Raleigh said, just let let the body make the decision and uh, I don't think a number need, need be there. Okay. Maybe you can massage the, whatever that phrase is about otherwise good cause to. Reasonable discretion. Yeah. Councilor Giacomo. I do have a quick question for the attorney on this. Um, with. With regards to rules of orders, my garage rules are a little bit, a little bit lax these days. Um, is there allow it do? Is there any discussion allowed on that, on this on a vote like this? Well, again, that that's something that the that the body itself can determine. Um, as you know, um, Robert's rules uh, applies in the absence of a rule, <laughs> uh, and so if you wanted to. Uh, uh, allow that you know open that up to debate or discussion uh, you can certainly do that and I can draft I can draft it uh, draft it into the into the uh, proposed change and the only reason I ask that question is because I'm 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 a forever devil's advocate when it comes to well almost anything on this committee um, but specifically with regards to this one the what, what I worry about is okay do, is there is there a room if people do feel like it is either A, being abused, or B, someone is asking something and the council goes, I guess it's reasonable, and they do it more than once, or someone believes that there's a political thing going on, whether it be the full council thing, you know, aligning with, oh, we don't really like that guy, we're gonna vote against theirs, but the same reason comes up with a different councilor and it gets voted forward. Those are the kind of things that, I hope they never happen. I don't think they'll happen. I like to believe in humankind, but if there is, if there is, if we allow for a discussion, if there is the, if, if it is in our rules to allow for discussion on this, then someone could bring forward, why, why are we allowing this this time and didn't allow it last time? That's my only concern with this. So you're, I, I just want to clarify for my own understanding, your deliberation is in regards to the request by a potential Zoomer at full council or at the committee once they've stated their reason for the request before the council votes? Yes, it would be before council, it would have to, I guess it would have to be before full council votes in this before case. Yeah. Okay. So I just want to find out legally if there is a, 
if there is a space in there where we are allowed to discuss it, that's all. You, you can, if you desire to, you can create that space. I, my only caution is, you know, with respect to the law of unintended consequences, uh, because you're going to then be debating an individual's, potentially an individual's very personal reason mm -hmm. for not being able to attend. Um, I, I suspect it would probably mostly come up in the context of uh, whether or not under the reasonable discretion standard, uh, if that's in there. I suspect that few people uh, on the council, few reasonable people on the council, uh, would, if, if they understand that an individual has a disability or a medical issue or something like that, I suspect there would be no issue to debate. It would come up in the uh, other area, the squishy area, uh, as was pointed out. Um, that's all, the only caution that I will give you about that. I, I think I'm going to just go right full, full backwards on that one and just say, you know what, I'm going to trust humankind on this okay. and not try to put any extra language in there. Well, I guess I'll put in my two cents worth sitting here. Um, we're all adults, and the, from my experience, it's been 15 people that really are here because they want to be. And there's not, I mean, there are some folks who say, well, they, this worked well in the 18th century or whatever, and we shouldn't change it. Well, that's kind of heavy duty because this is today. So I just thank you so much for bringing this forward. And I, the, the reason, I don't know, if a person needs a reason, I don't know. I certainly wouldn't want to abuse it. But I know that I, I missed some meetings because I was in Idaho for the passing of a family member. But I had what I had done is I had gotten in touch with the mayor. And um, I think that you you are probably like very a lot of counselors who would think that that was the appropriate process. And I think that it sounds like, you know, there needs to be somebody who is a real head of this, who yeah. who will have the authority to. And it's it probably, I mean, the staff can m come up with a person out of their own um, volition, but it sounds like the clerk is the one who has to get this technology set up. So that might be just the easy button for you, um, city manager. Yeah, just to clarify. The council will be, or the committee will be, the authority. Sure, um, but it's getting the person brought in. They would automatically be brought in, I think, is what we're saying, yes. uh, once they made the request. Correct. So if you don't mind, just so I'm clear, I, right now the, the drafting is going to be to deal with that question about making sure it gets in front of the full council. Correct. Right? I'm not going to change at this point any numbers, any language with respect to that, we'll bring it back. If you all in the council wants to add more reasons, you can do that at this point. Everyone okay with that? Yes. <clears throat> Councilor Remy. Thank you. Just one thing I thought of that might be worth consideration. I don't know how to, you might want to think about it a little bit. Most of these votes will probably be 14 to zero accepting and saying it's fine. If you want to remove the risk of it being a political decision where there's like maybe a swing vote, you could require a two-thirds majority to deny. Basically saying if the full council's here and five people say yes, they should be able to come in, and the other, you know, nine don't, or then they still come in. Creates a it creates an ability where it's like if it's a close vote, um, that person would still come in. If some group of the council thinks it's a reasonable excuse, it's probably reasonable there's not going to be that many split votes on this. Mm -hmm. So I'm just trying to think of how you remove the risk of it being political. Not mm -hmm. for our council, obviously, but for 100 years of in the course. future where this yes. is a... For all the corrupt councils in the future. 100 years <laughs> in the future. <laughs> yeah. That we're always very concerned about. We, we try um, to be careful, but that's my thought, is if you... They're mostly going to be 14 to 0. If you did a two-thirds to deny, I think that you would cover that. So I would just like to... Um, throw that back to the city attorney. Are there certain situations where I know there are certain situations under our current rules that require a two-thirds vote? Yes. Can we just create any situation that we would like and say that that it requires a two-thirds vote as long as it's in the rule or is there specific criteria that requires that? 
unless it, unless the two-thirds vote or a different kind of vote is otherwise required by statute for some reason, like with bonds. Correct. You, you, you have control over your own rules. Okay. So if you want to have uh, that kind of su sort of supermajority uh, action to take place uh, for a denial, um, that can be written into the rule. Okay. Do we have any comments on that? Councillor Ormard? What I like about uh, Councillor Remy's suggestion is it's a bias towards acceptance. And the, so I, I think that's a reasonable approach. Councillor Jones? Uh, just a question. If we, you're at Kent committee and there's four people and you get a 2-2 vote. It goes down. It, go, it just goes down, right? It's a, Explain what you mean when it goes down as just dropped or? If, if you haven't been able to meet the threshold uh, number, um, then you haven't made any decision at this point. So, But it goes down in that case would mean we, the you're would be, allowed to participate. You would be allowed to participate. Yes. Thank you for that. yes. Sorry. That, that's, that, that's, that's right. Yes. You know, you have, you have to flip your thinking. It's, <laughs> exactly. You usually try to do these in the positive. But yes, <laughs> that's exactly right. They would be allowed to participate. Councilor Greenwell. As long as we're uh, exploring the rabbit hole, as you said, uh, the uh, requester can vote, yes or no? Ooh. No. Write it down. Okay. Yeah. Do we have anyone else from the public who would like to speak on this? All right. So um, I think we've given appropriate direction to the staff. Hopefully you guys come up with something wonderful and creative for us to review at our next meeting. And I would be open for a motion. Um, move to place the request for an amendment to the rules of order regarding remote access on more time to allow city staff to develop proposed language to section four, considering Council Greenwell's letter and the Planning License and Development Committee discussion tonight. Second. second that. We have a uh, motion by Councillor Giacomo, a second by Councillor Jones. Any comments on the motion? Anyone from the public? Seeing none, I would ask for a vote. All in favor? Bill, is that a hand? Yes, and that is unanimous. Um, so that is the end of our agenda, folks. Uh, we will hopefully see you guys back here in a month. And Have a good night.